Hey guys, what's up? So why do people not know current artists? Why is like, um, you know, people know Boris Vallejo and Juby Bell, but that's very, very like, that's one of the few, that's one of like the handful of people that know good artists. In fact, like most of the people that ask you like, what's your favorite artist? They expect you to say something like Rembrandt, Picasso, or uh, Monet, or Renoir. And you know, when you say one of my favorite co uh, artists is Boris Vallejo, they really don't really know who that is, you know? And just very, very few people actually know of that, those kinds of artists. And mostly it's uh, people that, um, they're co comic book fans, basically. And, and and comic book fans, they just know their favorite artists, but they know like Jim Lee and all these guys, and they're just comic book artists. You know, they're, they're just like drawing comic books from the 50s, the 60s, and all the way up. You know, so not a lot of people know Boris Vallejo, Michael Whalen, you know? Um, I mean, unless you read the, the novels that they were in, you know, but the thing is that that's really, really weird. So like when I would, when I'm asked, you know, someone's, you know, someone asks, oh, what's your favorite artist? I know if I say like Michael Whalen is one of my favorite artists, they're gonna be like, they're not gonna know who that is. Like that, that'll be like, you know, that conversation won't go anywhere because they're not gonna know who these people are. Like I'll say a name of an artist, Jim Burns, you know, um, and they'll be like, they don't know who that is, you know? So it's, so whenever anyone asks me now who my favorite artist is, Unless they're into art a lot, like very, very into art, I'm like real careful to say, you know, I'll still say Boris Vallejo. And then I'll, I'll like, I won't even like, I'll, I'll think, do they or do they not know who that is? Even, even if they're into art, even if they, even if they are artists, you know? Yeah, what, you know, it's just, there's just too many people that have asked me who's my favorite artist. And I would say my favorite artist was, you know, uh, Boris Vallejo or, or uh, Michael Whalen, and they would just not, not know who they are. And like, like the, would, that conversation would go nowhere because no one knows that answer. You know, they'll, they know like Salvador Dali and stuff like that. And I was just wondering like, why is it that people only know those old artists? And the thing about, what's interesting about like modern artists that do abstract work, people know their names also. They know a few of them, like the big ones. The guys that, you know, their bananas stuck to a wall went for $150,000 or something like that. That's the guy they know, <laughs> you know. But I'm not into modern art. I think it's a nice way to decorate your wall in sometimes, depending on where you put it. I, you know, it could look nice on the wall, but I don't see it as, as a masterful painting. I see modern art as, and I think the reason it's so, um, it's liked by so many people is because it looks like a simple down to earth thing that anyone can do. You know, that's, that's what, you know, when you have like three colors, one color, one color, one color, and, and that goes for $10 million at Sotheby's at an auction and nobody knows why. And I really think it's because it's punk rock art. You know, it's, it's the reason people like the Ramones over, you know, the filler, the, 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 the Philharmonic Orchestra or something like that. Because the, the Philharmonica Orchestra, they took 20 years to learn their instruments and the Ramones pick up their guitar and like a month later they made a song, you know, with like a few different uh, hand positions that they learned and they just put them all together and wrote a song. You know, it, it didn't take them 20 years to learn how to do their song. You know, the punk rock songs. Punk rock means like, you would just like start playing whatever you knew and that would be your creation. So that's cool, but it's not the same thing as the Philharmonic or, or artists that, and musicians that took 20 years to learn that. So I, I think that, you know, the difference, the reason why people like modern art is because it's something they can do. I mean, they'll look at, they'll go to a museum and they'll look at uh, a Renoir maybe they can do, you know, but they'll look at like one of the old master paintings and it's just so perfect. It's so beautifully done. It's masterful. It's like everything is done so great about it that, you know, the, the average person that dabbles in art or likes to draw 
or even doesn't like to draw feels like how do you ever get to the point where you can paint that, you know? And it's, it's intimidating and they don't feel any connection with it because it's just too hard to do. That's why like, you know, a very complicated song is something, you know, that someone can't play on their own guitar. And it's just very, very complicated. And that's like, it's so much easier to just play a song with just a few bar chords and uh, you put it together and you're able to, to have a song there. So the thing about this is, this is modern art because this is the art that's happening now. It's contemporary art. It's um, fantasy, but, but fantasy is contemporary art. You know, it's fantasy is contemporary art. It's, um, it is contemporary art because this is the art we draw now, we we look at now, like look at the amount of, the, the amount of art that's fantasy art rather than the amount of art that's another genre. There's just so much of fantasy, like there's so many, even anyone drawing a unicorn, that's fantasy art, okay? Anyone drawing like, um, a, a, you know, a person flying on a horse with wings, that's fantasy art. Anyone drawing a science fiction looking car, it's fantasy. You know, all of this is fantasy. And uh, it, it, what's interesting is that's modern art. That's where our imagination has taken us in the modern time. You know, um, the old arts, the old masters is what people know. And, and that's the thing that people recognize. Like when you say Michelangelo, when you say Da Vinci, uh, you know, when you say uh, these guys, you know, uh, all, all of these these masters when, when you when you say their names people right away know what they are they know who they are and you know and then and the thing is that um, yeah they're great they're great at what they do but it's not is it relevant I mean it's the it's classic so it's always going to be relevant but it's not modern and it's not contemporary modern art is not like that bananas taped to a wall or whatever it is or, or three lines on a canvas you know that's like that's abstract that's not modern you know modern art is what they're drawing now what they're putting on book covers album covers if you look at album covers any album of a band and their album cover uh it's usually fantasy art there's usually some element of fantasy even some bands they 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 create fantasy music with stories of fantasy and stories of dragons and unicorns and flying horses and or futuristic cars and stuff like that you know anything lots of stories are fantasy and you illustrate those stories with fantasy art a lot of um comic books are fantasy art i mean even even like even like you would you would say maybe you would say superhero is a different genre you know but it's superhero is a fantasy thing even if it's a its own genre because it's such a big thing on comic books so superhero would be a fantasy thing but if you look at the non-superhero comic books they're about fantasy things and you would have like the 80 percent of comic books that are superhero based and the 20 percent that are not superhero based out of that 20 percent of non-superhero based 19 percent are fantasy based fantasy sci-fi horror but even horror is like not real like fantasy is anything that's not reality like it's it's fiction but fiction in the modern world that that kind of mirrors reality and, and it's 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 sort of like a made-up story but it's in a it's in the current world it's an existing world that's fiction but any story that's not in the existing world or an existing world that warps into some other concept like Hellblazer, where there the world is just dominated by you know the occult and magic and spells and every, people are witches and there's like voodoo and all that kind of stuff, um, and the stories are all about that. And there's demons and they're like summoning circles and stuff like that. That's fantasy. Um, Neil Gaiman, all fantasy. I mean, if you look at the best, the best comic books, I would say superhero comic books are also fantasy. But let's just say that's their own genre because it's you can be superhero but in the modern world so it'd be like fiction more except that fantasy except that superhero element but the the genre of 
um, Neil Gaiman or a lot, a lot of those other, most of the other comic books are some kind of fantasy based, whether they're in science fiction worlds, horror worlds, um, fantasy worlds, uh, in the past, in the future, in an alternate reality, uh, like Saga, where everyone has horns. Um, the stories or stories that, that are steeped in mysticism or, or like the otherworldly thing or things that happen in those stories that make those stories like one step beyond, like, like Twilight Zone kind of stories where just these fantasy things start to happen to, to regular people and they're like, wow, this happened. I can't believe this is real, you know, whatever. And um, that's all fantasy and, and the stories are fantasy. So I think current stories, the stories that people are telling now, most of them are fantasy based, whether they're science fiction or anything. I mean, some of the stories that they're saying now, maybe they're romantic comedies and that's not a fantasy. That's very, very, I mean, romantic comedies are fantasy because the things that happen in a romantic comedy do not happen in real life that much. Like 80% of it is just not anything that would happen in real life, but it's still not that fantasy that it would like, that you're in a completely other world with other physics and other beings and all kinds of people, things that exist that don't exist now or exist in the future in another time, spaceships, uh, people riding dragons and stuff like that. But I think that that's what stories create art. You know, people that draw, they draw based on stories. You know, like someone makes a story, there's always gotta be art that goes with it. And that's the thing with comic books also is like, people take stories and art and put it together but wherever there's art, there's a story behind it. And wherever there's a story, there's art behind it. So if someone just writes a story, you know, people think, what is the art that's gonna go into that story? Like if someone writes Harry Potter, right away, that person reading is thinking, maybe that person's an artist, maybe that person's just reading the story and they're thinking, wow, I'm gonna draw the things that are in that story, you know? Um, so when there's a lot of sci-fi stories, a lot of, horror, otherworldly stories, a lot of science fiction and fantasy stories of other times, other worlds, other planets, other realities, or other beings that don't really exist in our current reality, and they're written about, there's always gonna be that guy that's gonna draw it. And then there's gonna be that person that makes a drawing, and it's maybe like a person, you know, two people with lances, like, coming at each other, flying on dragons. And you see that and it's so, it's so inspirational that someone that loves writing and loves stories will look at that picture, look at that painting and, and write a story about it and say, this is what's happening in this painting. I'm gonna write a 50 page, 100 page story, or even like a 10 page story about what's happening in that one scene. Or maybe they'll take that one painting and go, we love this painting, we love this concept. Can you do a comic book for this? Can you make a story out of it? Is there a story behind what you just drew? And a lot of times there is a story behind what that artist just drew. You know, so, but every, but, but you don't just, when someone writes a story, it does, you know, you don't just have that story by itself. There's always art that goes with it. There's always people that draw what happens in that story and they make, you know, and they're like, this is the character from that story. You know, just people read the story and people draw it. They draw the scene, you know, like if it's Lord of the Rings, they wanna draw the characters in the story. They wanna draw it, they wanna create it. They wanna dress up like the people in the story, you know, so, so that's why Contemporary art, mo like modern art really is fantasy art. Um, it's, it's, it's dominated by fantasy art. Um, of course, there's always the everyday art, but if you've noticed like just everyday art doesn't really, like it, you know, you could have everyday art, but a lot of the art that I see like in galleries and stuff, it's everyday art, but the artist always changes it somehow. Like, you know, makes the colors different. Like people with skin tones that don't exist, like blue skin tones, red lips, red hair, you know? Uh, um, like sitting in a room with different colors everywhere and like different patterns and whatever it is. They'll take their abstract impressionism and put that in the painting so that it's no longer just a painting of somebody. 
Uh, and, and of course, there's always portraits, which is just paintings of people, right? Or like an accurate, like they just draw what they see. That someone sits down on, on a bed or on a chair in a room and someone draws it and someone paints it. And it's an accurate description of that person. And that's beautiful, but there's the, then there's like, you know, that's also art, that's fine art, uh, but that's not really, I don't, you know, that's not really what most people collect unless you know the person that's in the, you know, in the portrait. I mean, it's, it may mean something maybe for the artist, it means something maybe for the person in the portrait, maybe someone who wants to do their portrait done and they put that on their wall, but, it, to a lot of other people, it's just a, a person's, you know, drawn. And it doesn't say anything. It's just a person drawn. But what does say something is the artist changing that around, putting horns on the person or putting wings on the person, putting them on a horse and flying through the air, or, you know, someone just drawing out of their imagination um, things that they just invent. Uh, Boris Vallejo draws mostly out of his imagination. Um, he does a lot of reference with, you know, he draws a lot, the women look like that. That's exactly what the model looks like, but the rest of it is imagination. And that's the fantasy part of it, you know? And uh, so modern so modern art is really fantasy art, you know, or, or even I'm gonna say, if it's not fantasy art, it's realistic art, which is cool, which is still cool. It's still art. I mean, someone drawing an accurate, building or a house or a beach or an amusement park or a snowy river or a mountain or whatever it is that's really cool you know but the thing is that that's that that's art that's been around forever you know it's not modern it's it's classic art that's classical art you know so uh modern art is is, is fantasy modern art is the art that's happening now not the art in the museums that happened in the 1500s and the Renaissance. That's classic art, that's beautiful, and that's always gonna be amazing. But what's really, but when someone says modern art, they say, they, they're thinking of that abstract thing and that's not modern. You know, it's, it's, it's that, that's, that's been around from the, since the 19th century when it got popular. It's, a, it's nice on the wall, you know, on the wall as a decoration but modern art is the art that people are painting now and you know it's interesting that you know it's interesting when people do recognize the modern artists like Boris Vallejo it, it is like once in a while I will say you know when someone asks who's your favorite artist and I'll say Boris Vallejo, Michael Whelan, and Jim Burns you know um and these guys and uh don't know who I'm talking about <laughs> and it's mostly people that follow art but the mass majority of people only know like Monet and those guys, you know, cause that's what's in the museum. And even if they've seen these people that make recent art, the fantasy stuff, even if they see those people that make that kind of art, you know, they kind of know the art. I know not everyone knows the person, so yeah. So cool, so anyway, what what do you guys think? Um, do you guys know the modern artists or uh, do you guys know the, the traditional artists? What do you think of like abstract art? Do you think that modern artists like should be known more? <laughs> you know, current concept, you know, artists should be known more by the general public and they don't really, a lot of people don't know who they are. Let me know in the comments and like and subscribe to my channel, please. And I will see you guys in another video. Take care. Bye.